This first mistake is absolutely tiny, but it can sink your look. Come on, gents, look close. Can you spot the mistake? Now, gents, I'm sure a few of you guys caught it, but yes, I did not button a button right there on my cuff and right here on the front of the shirt. I had a button missing. And right with that, let's talk about belt loops. You want to make sure when you're putting on a belt, you put it on correctly. Now, gents, I get it. In the grander scheme of things, tiny details. But here's the thing. People pay attention to those small details. And if you can catch it by simply looking at yourself in a full length mirror before walking out the door, why wouldn't you do that? Next up, gents, let's talk about your neck the front and the back. Now, you've seen the memes of the neck beard. You know to stay away from this. Keep it trimmed, keep it clean, pay attention to your neck. Yeah, you don't want to have nicks, you don't want to have craziness, you don't want to have random hairs growing all over the place. But strangely enough, tons of guys out there don't pay attention to the back of their neck. Even after going to the barber, they don't get this cleaned up or they don't maintain it being clean, especially a week or two after getting that haircut. Guys, a very simple thing to do, run a razor down this or a pair of clippers, take care of the back of the neck, don't have that reverse neck beard. And speaking of grooming, let's talk about nails. So, this right here is a nail brush. You want to make sure you have one in your bathroom and use it daily to clean your nails. Next up, this right here, clippers, the majority of you guys use this. It's a great place to start, but advanced guys, yeah, level two, you guys are using scissors. Scissors do a much better job of making sure the nail is cut properly. Now, if you want to graduate to level three, learn to use a file. Whether it's glass or metal, a file, especially when used correctly going in one direction, is going to be one of the best ways to make your nails look good. Now, what if you bite your nails? Guys, I get it. Some of you guys have this bad habit and how to get over it. Okay, they have nail polish out there that you can actually put on. It's clear and it tastes horrible, so you will stop biting them. But I think a better method is to actually go in and get a manicure. Yes, get a manicure. Why? Because when you spend money on your nails and you have a professional taking care of them, guess what? You are going to be less prone to actually damage, to mess up what you just spent money on. And I've talked to a number of guys about this. Yeah, it actually seemed to work. So, if you are biting your nails, go and see a professional and spend some money on it and uh, yeah, you'll probably stop. The next style mistake you want to fix, that floppy flat collar that keeps sliding underneath your jacket that has no life to it. Now, how to fix that? Well, you could go out and buy all new shirts with better front plackets and better collars. Or you could look at today's sponsor, Slick Collar, and you could fix the existing shirts in your wardrobe with this one insert, this one unique piece and to strengthen that collar and make it so it looks good. Now, within every package of Slick Collar, you get two slick collars. One is going to be the regular size, the other one is going to be the slim. Now, I find the slim is perfect for polos, although it can also be used with dress shirts, but both of these are going to show. Notice they're adjustable right there in the back, so it doesn't matter what size your neck. This is actually going to work. It can be adjusted to fit you perfectly. Oh, and as a bonus, they throw in four collar stays. So, if you have an issue with the actual collar points on your collars not holding steady, this goes right in there, the collar bones, and it will help keep that collar point looking good. And again, gents, just to show you how simple this is, you simply take your collar, you fold it up, you put the slick collar right in there, fold it right down and boom, you are good to go. You're not going to wash your shirt with this. You simply take it off and you can use it with all the shirts in your wardrobe and you forget it's there. It's light, it's out of the way, it just simply makes you look better. And by the way, they do have a patent on this and that's what I love about this business. The entrepreneurs that founded this, they saw a problem, they solved the problem. So, seriously guys, check them out. I will link to them down in the description of today's video with the best deal you're going to find on the web. Awesome company, proud to support them. Now, speaking of layering, let's talk about sweaters. So, after you've worn a sweater for a while, especially if it's made of a variety of materials, you're going to notice that the sweater starts to pill. Pill are those little balls that form usually around the armpits, around areas in which there's a lot of friction. You want to get rid of these. One of the easiest ways is to use a sweater stone. If that's not available, then simply look to a disposable razor. Yes, you're going to shave your sweater and this does an excellent job of getting rid of the pilling. So, this next mistake makes you look really sloppy and that is wearing white that is no longer white. Yeah, it was your favorite t-shirt, your favorite dress shirt, 
but it's starting to yellow and you don't know exactly when this happened, but you're starting to notice it and you throw it in the wash and nothing seems to happen. But let me ask, are you washing it properly? So, the first thing is to maybe add just a little bit of bleach. You don't want to overdo this because too much bleach can actually cause the yellowing. Other options are to add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, maybe add some baking soda, add a little bit of vinegar. All of these can help to reduce and get rid of that yellowing. Now, if none of these home remedies work and you're not washing this with colors, again, you're washing your whites with whites, then take it to a dry cleaner, especially if this is a shirt that you do want to try to salvage. They've got special chemicals that they will put on that white to try to bring back out the brightness. All that being said, and especially if we're talking about a t-shirt here, it just may be time to get a new one. So, maybe turn that into a work shirt you keep around the house. Maybe when you turn into rags, you use to polish your shoes and let's go out and get a new shirt. One preferably made from a nicer material with a great fit that's going to make you look good. Now, this next mistake drives me crazy and I see it all the time and that's people wearing pants, jeans that are too long and the back is starting to fray because they're stepping on it, they're dragging it. And I don't know if they don't, they, maybe they don't notice, maybe they think nobody else notices. It's just a very sloppy, kind of nasty look. The fact that, you know, you're dragging, you're bringing this nastiness into your house and you're walking around. I know for me, my jeans, I get them hemmed properly. Yes, even my jeans, all of my trousers, I make sure that they don't touch at the end because, yeah, I don't want to drag that stuff in my house and I want my trousers to last. Now, this next one sneaks up on you because you don't think anyone's going to notice. You're dealing with the discomfort. What am I talking about? The whole in your socks until you go over to your friend's place and everyone takes off their shoes. It's a big event and there you've got your big toe sticking right out of those socks. Here's the thing. Make sure, one, it's simple to repair socks. If you really love that pair, this is how you do it. You Basically, you're going to stitch around the hole and then you're going to close the hole with that stitch. It's actually a pretty efficient and effective way. That being said, if you don't want to bother with this, then take those holy socks and go ahead and throw them out or throw it into the rag bin. I know we've got one of those at my house. My daughters love to cut up that material and use it to make Barbie clothes and stuff like that. But let's just stop wearing that, get a pair that doesn't have holes. But to be honest, I don't even see how people deal with this. I mean, I can deal with a lot of pain. I can deal with a lot of crap, but holes in my my socks, for some reason, it just drives me nuts all day. Does anyone else have this issue, this pet peeve? Let me know in the comments below. Now, gentlemen, if you're enjoying today's video, if you have ever seen any of these mistakes, if you've ever made them, do me a favor and smash the like button because together we can help more men find this video because yes, when you engage with them, YouTube shows it to more guys and I do think a lot of guys need help improving their style and stepping up their game. The next mistake a lot of guys make is not knowing how to use an iron. First up, you want to buy the right iron. Notice the the number of holes on the bottom. This means that this has a great steam function and usually that's what you're paying extra for the base plate. They're putting more metal into it. It's going to be stronger. It's going to maintain a more consistent heat and it's going to allow you to really have a good solid steam function. And that steam function is key because it allows you to take care of suits. It allows you to basically to infuse that steam into material so you don't have to directly touch. Now, you will directly touch and you'll iron uh, cottons and, you know, set it to a lower setting and you'll be able to use it even on some blends. But understand that that steam is for me where it's at because you're going to be able to deal with so many different types of materials. That being said, learn how to iron a shirt. It's a very simple process and a really quick hack. If you're wearing a jacket, you only have a minute to iron your shirt, iron the front of it iron the collar and iron the cuffs. The rest of it, guess what, is going to be covered by the jacket as long as you leave it on. But you want to make sure, again, when you're wearing a nice shirt, you don't look sloppy and don't have, you know, creases and wrinkles all over it. Next up, let's talk about rolling your shirt sleeves. Have you ever heard of the A for roll? Okay, here it is right here. As you can see, a really nice, simple roll. My favorite part about this is you can pull on it, as you can see right here, and the whole thing will come right out. Now, AFA, what does it stand for? Antonio is friggin' awesome. Yes, that's right. I did create that acronym years ago and it's very actually interesting to see people use it and copy it. <laughs> now, this next one seems minor, but whenever I see it, I just want to take their glasses and clean them. Yes, I'm talking about smudges on glasses, whether they're sunglasses, whether they are regular glasses, especially if they are day-to-day -day glasses and you see someone just wearing 
dirty, smudged glasses. So one of the easiest things to do is one, have a case for your glasses. So put them away when you're not using them. But in that case, have a microfiber cloth. Yes, these come free and a lot of people just throw them out, but microfiber cloths are just perfect. They're so much better than a paper towel or even your shirt because your shirt using cotton or a paper towel using, you know, some type of a pulp. This right here is going to actually have a lot more abrasive in it versus the microfiber, which is made specifically to clean the lens. And especially if you're using a solvent, something to actually go in there and uh, do a good job dissolving the oils. Now, really quick, let me ask any of you guys, pet owners, cats, dogs, I've got both. And the problem with them, as you know, is that they shed and that hair ends up everywhere. It ends up on your jackets and ends up on your coats, especially darker colored coats. You want to make sure that you're getting rid of the lint. I know I've got lint removers in my vehicles. I have it right there where I keep the jackets. You want to make this easy and you want to be consistent. And speaking of loose lint, loose hairs, let's talk about loose threads, especially on buttons. People see these and okay, I know a lot of you guys are not carrying around emergency sewing kit. You don't have time to deal with this. So one of the easiest hacks here is to take a little bit of super glue. Yes, I have I have super glue. I have it in my vehicle. I've got it in multiple places in my house. And guess what? You just put a little bit of super glue. Yes, right there on the button, wherever they, it's starting, that thread's coming undone and it is a temporary hold. At some point, you want to get this repaired. You're going to want to cut the button off and re sew it on. But for now, the super glue is going to keep that thread from unwinding anymore. Now, I know if you've been wearing a shirt or you've been wearing a jacket or anything for a long time, you're going to start to see frays. You're going to start to see material coming off there. You can go through and trim it. But if Eventually, you're going to want to take this to a professional to be able for them to be able to fix it up or eventually you're going to need to retire this piece. What video to watch next? Well, guys, if you're making these mistakes right here, they are going to make you look fat. Now, I say this with love because I want you guys to look good. I want you to look large and in charge, not fat and sloppy. And by the way, if you are a thin dude, I've still got you covered in this video because there's some solid info here. It's a good one. Go check it out. It's solid.